Hey everyone, let's start an interactive render to see how the scene looks. You might notice that there are not enough trees to cover the ground. To fix this, you can increase the number of trees by adjusting the count in the surface scattering section. Let's try changing the count to 2000. Now, there is a problem. It looks almost the same. This is because we have reached the maximum number of instances. Let's scroll down a bit to the display and limit section and change the mat instances to 5000. This controls the maximum number of objects that can be shown in the viewport. If you have more objects than this limit, some will be hidden to keep your computer running smoothly. Let's go back to the surface scattering section and then change the count to 4000 to see the difference. This works well, but there is a catch. If you make the ground bigger, the trees will spread out more making the forest look less dense. If you make the ground smaller, the trees will bunch up, making the forest look too crowded. This could be a problem if you plan to use this scatter as a template for other projects with different ground sizes. To solve this, you can check the per square option. This changes how the count works. Instead of scattering a fixed number of objects, it lets you control the density based on the area. For example, if you want the objects to be placed close together, you can decrease the per square value. For our forest, if you set the count to 10, exactly 10 trees will be scattered across the entire surface, no matter how big or small it is. But if you enable per square and set the count to 50 and the per square value to 100 meters, then 50 trees will be scattered for every 100 by 100 meters area of the surface. This allows to keep the density consistent and set a more accurate forest, even if the surface size changes. But for this example, it's too little. Let's change it to 50 trees each 50 square meters. You can also use a texture to affect the scatter density. For example, you could apply a black and white map. To simplify the visualization of this, I'm going to use a simple gradient map where black areas don't receive any scatter and white areas receive the full density. Gray areas will be a scattered density based on the intensity of the gray, which allow for creating cluster of objects in some areas and fewer objects in others. This is useful if you want your forest to have a more natural clearing or patches with dense trees. If you have forest pack installed, you can use any of the maps that come with it, or you can even create your own maps with Photoshop for accurate results. Now that we have added more trees, we might run into a situation where some of them could collide with each other. To handle this, you can turn on the Avoid Collision options in the scattering section. This option is really helpful because it ensures that instances like trees, rocks, or any other scattered object don't overlap or intersect with each other. Just keep in mind that turning on this option may reduce the total number of instances in your scene. This happens because some objects will be discarded to avoid collisions. Let's leave it at 50 or 40%. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to click the like and subscribe button. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. And thank you for watching.